Bye, Ram. Thank you, Sister Monica. And thank you, Sister Aparna and the SSC team, the National SSC team, for giving me this opportunity. My humble pranams to our loving Lord and Mother, dear Sai, and loving Sai Rams to all of you, my dear brothers and sisters. This is a wonderful weekend for all of us to be students, as Sister Aparna was saying. And we are going to really learn a lot through these activities session. And I'm excited. I'm sure all of you are excited too. When Sister Aparna called me, she was asking me to explain. She gave me a structure actually to share some things about my journey as I evolved to become a SSC teacher. Thankfully, we were born in a Sai family and Swami to me was my Ishta Devata, one who can, I can go to and ask him for anything and he'll give it to me. So as a child, he was the person I go to to ask for things and it will get fulfilled. And he was my loving Lord too. So he was like this Kalpa Vriksha, the wish fulfilling tree. And he was also Abad Bandava, who was always there to rescue me and my family whenever I need. So there were times when my father used to come home late because he had an assignment. And I would write uh, Om Shri Sai Ram and 108 times, hoping that my father will come home safe. And doing that made me felt good. So he was this source of Ishta Devata, Kalpa Vriksha, and Abad Bandha as we speak in Sanskrit. And I hope I explained it in English too. So that's how I had been looking at Swami. And uh, my inclination or attraction to SSC, the first glimpse of it came when my niece, who's 10 years younger to me, and I was in college, and uh, she attended Balavikas. And soon after that, I went to college and came back home, and I saw her during lunch one day. She was eating. Before she ate, she took one handful of rice, and she kept it aside in her plate. And then she also kept some rice for the birds on the windowsill. So I said, what are you doing? And she, and she was telling me, you know, my Balavikas teacher told me that I should offer it to God before I eat. And that's what I'm doing. And I, she does it even now. She's an adult with a child now. And she also did one more thing. During Deepavali, we all get a budget to buy fireworks, just like how children here uh, celebrate July 4th with fireworks. What she did was, she said, I don't want to buy fireworks. I would like to give this money to the orphanage. And I think I'll be happy doing that. So her parents give her money. Uh, grandparents give her the money. And I was amazed. This is how the Balavikas program, when she was attending, instilled in her this beautiful thought of sacrifice and service and love for everyone. And that was a glimpse of what SSE can do to the little minds when they are young. And they grew up to be such beautiful young adults. But as a young adult, you know, I wanted to reflect on one thought, you know, when all of us attend all these uh, refresher training, we always go back with something distinct that will touch our hearts, right? So if you think about the past years that you've been attending the training, maybe you can make a mental note of what is it that I took away in the last few trainings? And I can distinctly remember one thing. The one thing, invariably, any satsang or sai event that we go to, we hear that we are the chosen ones. Have you ever thought about we being the chosen ones and what it means to us? It always re-energized me after all these official training. Wow, we are the chosen ones. So we got to really do better than what we are doing now. So we are the divine instruments of Sai in his hands. And what can we do? Because he chose us. And that meant a lot to me. So I want to read one thing. I, I know Sister Aparna showed Swami's uh, video. That was a Balavikas, overseas Balavikas training that uh, Swami did in 1983 of August. And in that discourse, Swami says this. And I want to read it just like how Swami said. So it will inspire all of us. There are innumerable individuals in this world. Have they all got a chance to become Balvikas teachers? So you are those who have already been transformed in your previous life. That's why you have got a chance. 
you need have no doubt whatsoever whatever you can change for the better or not you are already good your sacred thoughts are an indication that you have already been trained so if today you believe that you have become a sprawling tree certainly that tree is healthy one which has gone straight and which has got leaves all around a very healthy looking tree we never talk to sapna about what you are going to say but you are talking about leaves and i'm talking about trees and leaves too i mean this is what swami is talking about so he is connecting us in all ways right so this is the time for us to really feel good about have such a healthy tree if i decide i am a healthy tree today yes i am a healthy tree if i am the most effective balavika teacher today or ssc teacher today yes i am that ssc teacher today let's start and think about this am i the chosen one how did i knew that i am the chosen one so my journey began and as this is a beautiful opportunity that you gave me so sapna to think about how i became a ssc teacher i never even thought about this incident all this time but while preparing for this it came to my mind i was studying in anamala university and i was a um, engineering student then and because of my name sai prasanna one of the professors called me and he said at the end of the class are you a sai devotee and i said yes i am a sai devotee would you like to serve during the weekends i said absolutely i would love to do that so he took us to a, a auntie who's a, a professor's wife and she was planning to start a balavikas program for the people in the in chidambaram at that time and so she wanted to train young adults and so she trained me and a friend of mine and little did i know that at that time i'm going to become a ssc teacher so swami had already planned that and i got the training we never got to execute a program there so i learned all the things i need to learn from that auntie but we never did that we did bhajans and stuff we didn't start a program but that's how it started so i vividly remember that this is all swami's plan to train us so when he chose any one of us to be ssc teacher if we all think back there must be something that would have helped us to get to that point so that was my initial seed of training from that auntie i wish i could um, talk to her about this because she sowed the seed and after that we moved to the uss after, after i got married and i had my son and so i wanted him to have some good bedtime stories so when i was at whitefield i picked up a book on human values program i forgot all about this training that i got and then we we were living in kalamazoo michigan and there was a small temple there and we used to be regular visitors to that uh, temple the senior members of the temple asked um, a friend of mine and me to conduct some educational classes for children then i thought i read a lot of swami's discourses swami will always say i have come to give you this and you always take my visiting cards you want miracles but you don't come and take what i came to give you so i never used to understand what he meant but i know that he was ask, asking us to think deeper so half the time while reading those discourses in the initial phases the understanding was very limited and but i agreed to though i thought i was not really ready to teach because the senior member asked i uh, worked with my friend she taught all the shlokas and i used this book that i got from whitefield and i was doing the human values program so this was not a formal uh, ssio ssc program but it was a informal program at this temple and so we got involved there and this is where the glimpse of sai comes because i got the opportunity or the thought to help the children to offer something for shivaratri there were many kids who learn uh, instruments in the orchestra and in the band so we got them all together they were interested in learning some bhajans and so i gave them the notations because i know to play an instrument converted it to western notes and had them uh, practice and play and we offered it to swami the children were active in their learning because they like to practice and do things and when we offered it it was a grand offering for the first time in that temple and after shivaratri celebrations we went home and when we, when i slept and i got up i had this beautiful dream 
Swami came in my dream and it was a festive atmosphere and he was giving out saris and I think I, he gave me one too. And so I was so pleased just to see Swami, nothing more. He doesn't need to give me anything, but just his vision made me felt so joyful because he acknowledged this offering made by the children. So the focus was on the children, on making them offer something. And so I think Swami likes this kind of attitude in teachers, where we are all totally devoted to the children and doing that. That's the message I got. This is acknowledgement from Swami. And as I uh, work through the SSC program and um, through Chicago Metro is my home, and that's where I grew and evolved to be a SSC teacher here. And I have so many senior members in the SSC program who have guided and mentored me to become a more effective SSC teacher because I used to be so excited as a new SSC teacher, whatever Swami says in his discourse, examples that he gives, I have to convert them to experiments. And we used to have a huge uh, resource of experiments. So this excitement made me share all that I understood to my children, not knowing that the children were not really ready to take up all the understanding I had. I got so excited about koshas and all those things that I learned. So one day, a senior member in my, she was our coordinator, Vasanta, and she told me, this is all nice. But then I think the children are going to be finding it difficult. So maybe you should bring it down. Okay. That's when I realized, oh, okay, this, I have to think about what my teacher, children are going to learn. And so the whole perspective changed and I corrected my way of teaching. And I'm sure all of us here are probably going through some stages like that or more evolved states. So this is my evolution journey. So it was helpful. The members around me, the teachers around me helped me, shape me to become a better teacher. And where Swami, when we call for requests, comes in to help, there's one small story here. So it was the retreat. And uh, during the retreat, we decided to have a service project where we were packing a lot of things like backpacks for school. And Sister Manjula was helping the student council advisors. Uh, she was the advisor and brother Suresh. So they were all helping our children to do that project. So this is multi region All our regional children were here. And there was so much noise. And we were all packing. And so we got them all in order. And we told them, let's chant the Gayatri while packing. And so everybody listened. But there were a few kids who are in the group three and four age group. They were wondering, we are packing. I don't want to chant the Gayatri. I want to talk and have fun. So that's what they were thinking. So one of the child was very disruptive and didn't want to listen. So I had to tell that child when the rest of the team was doing well, you please step outside. And I felt so bad asking him to step outside. So I went behind him, took him to a room, sat with him. I really want to understand what's going on in your mind. Can you please share? I'm curious because I want to understand what's really the thought process behind what you're thinking. He said, auntie, we are packing the things, right? This is a good work. What's wrong? We are doing the work. But if we talk, there's nothing wrong. And I, I didn't feel it was wrong at all, auntie. So this is what he was saying. I was glad he was really frank. And then uh, I thought, how do I explain to him? I, these are backpacks that the children are going to receive. And when you chant Gayatri, this whole thing, this atmosphere is going to energize. And this child may receive this energized product and he's going to learn well. And that is why we are saying, so he listened to me, he came back, he followed the instructions, but I knew I didn't convince him. This is a group four and group three child. It's a challenging age. They have all these questions. And so how are we going to make them feel the faith that we have? Can they get, how are they going to experience it? That's what we need to really help them. Blossom. So I was praying to Swami, I know I didn't give a good answer, Swami, please help me to really explain this in a way that's convincing for the child. And I, shared, I told this prayer to Swami, then we went to the retreat speaker session, and there was Dr. Upadhyay talking about his summer camp, I mean, medical camp. And he was telling us a story where he gave a, a blanket to a very sick lady he goes to that place annually every year. And this lady was so sick, he gave her this blanket. And then that's the end of the story for that camp and medicines too. The next year he came, 
um, and he asked that lady, how are you feeling? She came with beaming smile and she said, oh, I'm feeling so good. You gave me this blanket. I sleep with it every day and I am completely all right. I have no problems at all. And then he was saying, you know, guess what? You know why she's feeling, why she became better? All the ladies in our center, they chanted Gayatri while making this blanket. And that is why she got this energy from all that chanting and that healed her, not our medicines or anything. So that's what he said. What is the coincidence that I asked this question of Swami and he gives me an answer immediately through another brother like Dr. Upadhyay. This is the glory of Swami always coming in through his instruments and he will speak to us all the time. Just want to keep track of time. <laughs> okay, so that's what was happening in terms of experiences, subtle experiences that we get with Swami, that we will be able to uh, get energized by the thought that Swami is always with us and guiding us. And he is the real teacher. We are just instruments. And one thing I've noticed is even through huge retreat preparations, the energy never goes down when we think that Swami is the doer. And so Swami brings all his instruments together. We are never alone. In fact, once Swami came in my dream, he said, remember, you are never alone. I'm always with you. So this comes in handy all the time. And whether he tells it in our dream or through somebody that we hear it, it is a message for all of us because we are never alone. And he is the teacher who is teaching through us. All I need to do is just become empty. Let him do the work and be his hands, be his mouth and be his thoughts if he's just letting me do the work and i just don't think i'm doing that's when the real miracle happens the best things happen in the class i know we are all humans at times where you just go back and forget oh i have to do this i have to do that and we get really worried about certain things but that worryful nature is where we start believing in this physical body, but we don't understand that Swami is really doing the work. So there are times I have to remind myself, hey, this happened then. Can you remember that? You had no problems then. Now don't worry about everything. Swami is going to work through you. So that's how the energy keeps coming in. So this is, and the whole journey of SSC, it's a sadhana. So ever since I got this opportunity to teach here in Swami's organization, my son was the first SSC student and my niece was even before that she was SSC student. I was SSC parent first and then I became an SSC teacher. Now all this when I started teaching uh, the sister Bernice Mead had given us this beautiful manual and the value-based learning where we pick the value, pick the story, take all the five teaching techniques and I had close mentors in the Chicago Metro team where they were helpful in getting grooming me to become a better teacher so it was value-based and we were learning and doing all this stuff but as it, as it was evolving um, I started thinking about the children too who are these children where do they come from because there's this whole concept about k-u-d in the museum world which is know understand and do which means you have to know who your people are, who are the children in your class, which families are they coming from? Are they introduced to Swami uh, long back or are they getting introduced through the child? So many things. And what is this child doing in her life or his life? What are they interested in? Soccer, dance, music? So the, you should know about who this child is. And then understanding what is their mentality? How much do they know? And what is their interest in the class? What is going to excite them in the class? So understanding that and then making them do what we want them to do. So this process of development as an evolution of my teacher's life had really taken to get shape in my life. And so I used to spend time thinking about these kids. And over the time when I was preparing, the value was part of the lesson, but then the life application became the most important thing. This 
actually took more stronger roots when I became the regional coordinator and I was working with Brother Srinivas Raghavan as we were doing regional trainings because we started thinking about our classes. This is how I prepare for SSC now. So having evolved all this time. And we start with practice goals, practice goals, life application. So every quarter in our region, we have a topic. And for that topic, we think about what are the practice goals. And this is a beautiful framework where the practice goals are actually three kinds. One is where the child should practice on their own. The other one is where the child practices with the parents. So the parents also practice. And then the third one is where the child can practice at the with their friends, with the center members, or with the community. So we were just having a structure where we can think about practice goals like that. So we start preparing like that. And then all our classes, all the tech, five teaching techniques, whatever we need to plan for the class, this is only for me to think, not how I conduct the class. It's how I prepare for the class. So what is, if this child needs to practice patience and be very nice to their parents when they are talking and not talk back to them, especially in three and four, they feel like this, there's a big gap. So how do I stop and listen before I respond? So is this only the child's job? It's also the parent's job to do that. So this became a parent level practice where the parents join the child in respecting the child and the child respects the parents and they both are patient with each other and we try to see how we can practice. Now, how do I teach this? Then we think about the content and what is the content that's relevant for really emphasizing and enriching this practice. So that's how it has evolved over time. And we've been uh, helping each other through this journey of becoming an SSE teacher. And definitely SSC is a sadhana for all of us. And we are all chosen. And if these subtle experiences where Swami has acknowledged and given advice hasn't show, shown me that I'm a chosen one or hasn't shown any one of us here, brothers and sisters, we are all the chosen ones. And we are so blessed to be here together because Swami wants us in his mission. And he is asking us to be his divine instrument. So everything during these SSE study circle has been advice over advice for us to become those sharp divine instruments. So the practice doesn't stop. The children help us learn. The parents help us learn. Our center members help us learn. Our officers help us learn. Everywhere there's teaching around us. This whole day is filled with opportunities to learn. And I uh, encourage all of us to learn, make this opportunity, take this opportunity for the refresher training and then become a more effective teacher at the end of it. And I hope we'll have a wonderful, blissful life as an SSC teacher. Thank you, Sister Prana, and thank you, Swami, for this opportunity. Um, I hope to enjoy the conference with all of you. <laughs>